Okay, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna just bear with me for a second here. I just want to shop for some drills. I'm just gonna look through some pages of of drills here, and see what uh, see what these are all the same drill, right? Like. I can be confident that whether I buy a drill from a manufacturer that looks like this or looks like this, these are these are the same things, right? I mean, look at this. It's it's red and it's black, and it's and it's and it's got white lettering on it, and it's got a, a red and black battery at the bottom that looks like this. I mean, come on, it's a pretty cool looking drill. What's the difference between this drill and say this drill? They look they look like the same guys, right? They look pretty much the same, right? You see what I'm getting at, right? <laughs> these are these are very close. These are very, very, very close. And I'm pretty sure one company was using this branding before the other. However, the standard for trademark infringement is that it has to be confusingly similar. So does this reach a level of confusing similarity? Come on, hop. Nico is saying hi again. And uh, we did a Milwaukee video for um, AVE, right? Yeah, if you remember the AVE Milwaukee video, uh, you know, Milwaukee's got a patent on the first lithium ion cells that could deliver 20 amps continuously to a to a power tool so and they've been using this branding for a very long time but you may not you may or may not know that craftsman is 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 having some some issues let's see if we go over here to craftsman news craftsman tools is back and proudly made in the USA that that's that's that looks like an awful lot uh, of, uh, of 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 PR there um, but Sears owns Craftsman and Sears is not doing well so Sears is rebranding and Sears has apparently rebranded Craftsman to look an awful lot like Milwaukee I wonder I wonder if they've done this on purpose does anyone want to guess <laughs> if they've done this on purpose or not I bet you they've done this on purpose. What does the sander even look like? Sanders. They look different, but the colors are exactly the same. The lines are in similar places. The lettering is white. The font is different. The design is different. I get it. It's not the same. It's probably not substantially similar. But it is damn close. <laughs> so if you were wondering how you do trademark infringement without actually committing trademark infringement, or how you ride the coattails of your of your rival's trademark, this is how you do it. And from what I understand, Lowe's, Home Depot, Craftsman, Sears, Milwaukee, and all that are not the only people. We also have allegedly a letter from Sinister Diesel who claims to own a blue color trademark on an aftermarket diesel pickup truck industry category since January 22nd, 2009. And uh, you can see Sinister Diesel's blue is kind of all over their website here. And I did look up Dan's diesel performance, and I don't see exactly what the issue is here on this. So I thought, let's take a look through this uh, site here. I don't know if he has, he doesn't seem to give too many examples. Uh, no, he uses a South Park thing. So I'll go back to the, uh, the complaint here. We have become aware of the use of the color blue throughout your product offering or an option for powder coating use of this closely similar blue color in connection with aftermarket diesel performance parts is likely to cause confusion and that's interesting because you can actually trademark a color it is perfectly acceptable here is a article from ip watchdog that i highly recommend that you check out I'll post a link in the comments and the chat. And 
it it is true. I'm not just reading this off of the page. You can trademark a color. The trick is that it has to obtain secondary meaning. And the color cannot be functional, so it can't be like a warning color or something like that. What you have to do is use the color in such a way that it represents your products, like uh, pink for Pepto-Bismol. And then you must establish secondary meaning. Secondary meaning is when that color means something to your customers beyond it's just a color. So that secondary meaning usually is, I associate the color pink with Pepto-Bismol. It doesn't mean that you can't use pink in anything else, but let's say Corning, for example, I think it's Corning, has a trademark on the color pink for insulation, for fiberglass insulation. And you've seen, I think it's Corning, it could be somebody else, has a advertisement or had many years ago, I'm an old man at this point, a advertisement using the Pink Panther and and I'm installing pink insulation. And they they were they were achieving that secondary meaning for the color pink and their products and they could then register a trademark for the color pink to protect their their trademark. Um Vanta Black is trademarked, apparently. Okay, I could understand that. Uh, but Vanta Black is also functional. So good luck protecting that trademark from somebody who uses it for, for branding. That's functional. So if I decide that somehow I want you to be able to stare into my trademark and just lose yourself in the blackness of it, and I use Vanta Black for that... That doesn't mean that I violated Vanta Black's trademark because it's a functional color. It would be worth exploring. I'm not saying I'm giving you legal advice in all cases. I'm saying that uh, it's my my concern would be that that's functional if you're using it for its bla- purpose as blackness. And if you haven't seen it, there's a really cool demonstration of how we substitute. How do how do we know that Vanta Black is the blackest? you know, color or paint or whatever available. Well, you measure it against something that's blacker. How do you measure something that's blacker? Well, there's a YouTube video on that, and I'm not going to spoil it for you. It's really clever. There is a really, really clever way to make something blacker than Vanta Black. But if they could do that, then why would Vanta Black be so remarkable? Good question. Go watch the video. It's really clever. It's super clever. Vanta Black is, the, the, the name is trademark, not the substance. Okay, but the hypothetical example still reigns. It's still correct. If, if they tried to trademark Vanta Black, the blackness, the color itself, and say that you couldn't, you couldn't use that as a trade, you know, whatever. It's functional, so a different set of rules applies. So that's our show, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Thank you especially to our November Patreon supporters, not the least of which is Justin Rogers, supporting at the $500 level. Justin has reached out to us about what he wants us to talk about, and I will be in touch with you, Justin. I'm sorry, we've just been very, very uh, busy. Also, thank you to the $50 plus supporters, Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Kyle Mudrock, Evie, Andy, Vera Montaigne, Sean McNamara, William Gonzalez, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, AK a breakfast demon spirit bear Jan negre and Jax merrick and thank you to the five dollar plus supporters that will be scrolling on the screen and are scrolling on the led panel behind me ms kelly is also doing a sleep rough in the park thing for charity if you would like to donate please visit uk.virginmoneygiving.com slash miss k p a v d that's m i s s k p a v d I was going to mention it if you weren't going to today because I think it's an interesting, it's a, it's a really, really good thing that Kaylee's doing. And so we'll give everyone an opportunity to donate to Ms. Kaylee for her night in the park. So have a great weekend, have a great Sunday, have a great week, and I'll see you in the videos that drop and on our next show. Love you all. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Thank you for joining me. Have a good one.